Okay, let's talk a little bit about waves. When you hear the word wave, what do you think of? What are the first things that come to your mind when you think of wave? The beach, water waves, sound waves, warming your breakfast in the microwave, radio waves, doing the wave, wave waving at your friends. Okay, so there's all kinds of things that we see waves uh, on a regular basis. So what makes a wave? Okay, what are the, some of the things that we need in order to have a wave? When we think about some of those waves that we have, those water waves, those sound waves, um, you know, you, you know a wave when you see it, but let's, let's try and break it down, okay? So a wave uh, consists of, of something, something moving, something moving, and something else, right? Like a water wave is moving on water, and a sound wave is moving through air, okay? So it needs a medium, so there has to be some kind of a medium for a wave. So sound waves travel through air, and water waves travel through water, uh, and that sort of thing. Okay? The only exception to that is electromagnetic waves, because electromagnetic waves, um, light is kind of cool, it's its own medium, so it doesn't have to have a separate medium. Okay? But everything else, earthquake waves travel through the ground, uh, waves on a spring travel across a spring, um, sound waves travel through air, water waves travel through water, and so on. What makes up a wave? So if you have a, a smooth flowing river, is that a wave? Because it's water traveling, but it's not really a wave. So you need to have uh, a disturbance, right? So a, a, a shift or a movement in the medium, and the wave is the propagation or the, the movement of that disturbance in the medium. Okay, so if we look at waves uh, on a spring, um, the wave is a displacement of that spring uh, as it travels up and down along the length of the spring. Okay, so if we displace part of the spring and we let it go, what's happening is when we're displacing it, we're, we're creating tension. Okay, so we're, we're putting stress on the spring and uh, since springs are conservative, they can store that energy and when we release it, it releases that energy and it causes that disturbance or that, that stress to travel down the length of the spring. Okay. If we do it one at a time, it's actually called a pulse. In order for it to be a wave, there has to be multiples repeating over and over again. So the types of waves we can have. Um, if we have a spring and we deflect part of that spring and we let it go, then there is a sideways deflection that is moving down the length of the spring. And we call that a transverse wave because displacement is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So if the, the, the motion of the, the wave is down the length of the spring, but the motion of the particles are this way, transverse to the direction of motion, we call that a transverse wave. Next thing we can do is we can squeeze part of the spring together and we can let that go and when we let that go we get a little pulse of uh, compression traveling down the length of the spring and that's called uh, a longitudinal wave because the direction of displacement is in the same direction as the direction of motion. Another type of wave we can have is called a torsion wave, or torsional wave, and that's when we twist the spring and let it go and have that zip down the length of the spring. Okay, so we can have uh, transverse where it's moving side to side but the wave is traveling this way, like a water wave. Uh, we can have a longitudinal wave where the compression is uh, along the same direction as the direction of motion, sound waves are of that type. And then uh, we can have a torsion wave where there is twist traveling down the length of the spring. Okay, so let's look at what's going on with a wave. If we look at our wave, the yellow dashed line represents the, the rest position or the equilibrium position. And that's if the spring is at rest. Okay, the red line represents the, uh, the wave itself. So uh, when we generate a wave, it it does that, right? So it's that displacement from the rest position. When we have an upward displacement, we call it a crest, and we get that term from water wave, so the, the crest of a water wave, right? And then if we, when we go below the rest position, it's called a trough, 
Okay? Again, the terminology comes from waterways, but the trough is that downward uh, displacement away from rest position. So crests and troughs. We have amplitude. So amplitude is uh, our displacement or our maximum displacement from rest position. Okay? So it's not the crest to trough distance, but it's that um, displacement away from the rest position. And then we have the wavelength. So the wavelength is, of course, well, the length of a wave. So the wavelength is uh, crest to crest, or it could be trough to trough, or it could be at any point, as long as it's getting back to the same point in the cycle, uh, we call that a wavelength, okay, the length of one wave. If we're looking at a uh, longitudinal wave, longitudinal waves don't have uh, crests and troughs because the motion is uh, in this direction, the motion of the particles. And so instead what we do is we have uh, compressions, we call them compressions, when those particles are compressed together. And then in between the compressions we have regions that are called rarefactions, where the particles are becoming rarefied, they're becoming uh, more widely spaced or under lower pressure, if you will. So sound waves are of this type, so sound waves involve the air particles alternately being compressed and then uh, stretched, so high pressure, low pressure, uh, compressed and rarefied, okay, and that generates a longitudinal wave. Okay, some of the properties of waves. We have uh, the period of a wave. Now, the period of a wave is the time it takes for one full cycle of a wave. So that's measured in seconds, however many seconds it takes for a cycle. Um, we have the frequency, which is a term you've probably heard before. So frequency of the wave is how many waves we have uh, in a given second. Okay, so it could be one second, it could be many seconds, it could be a tiny, tiny fraction of a second. Okay, so it's how many cycles occur per second. And then, of course, we have how fast the wave is traveling through whatever medium it is. Okay, so in the case of water waves, they may be a, a meter or two per second. Sound waves may be about 350 meters per second and so on. But they all have some uh, speed. They travel through their, their medium. Okay? Now, period and frequency are kind of interesting. Um, because period, which is given the symbol big T, is, uh, is measured in seconds per cycle. And frequency, which is given the letter F, is measured in, well, in, in cycles per second. Uh, that's also called hertz. So hertz, hertz HZ uh, is the unit of frequency, and it simply means uh, per second, or, or one over uh, a second, okay? But since period is seconds per cycle, and frequency is cycles per second, they are reciprocals of each other. So frequency is one over period, and period is 1 over frequency. That's kind of important. We'll see later on why that's important. But in the meantime, let's take a little uh, look at um, some of these uh, properties. If we look at uh, this image from the movie Perfect Storm, if we say that the boat is about 12 meters long, um, the question then is, what is the approximate amplitude of the wave? Well, we can we can do this, okay, we can't get an exact measure, but we can do this if we kind of ballpark it and go, well, it's maybe uh, from the top of the wave right down to the very bottom is about five times the length of the boat or so. Um, we we'll say that the bottom, the very bottom, the bottom of the trough is, is below the, the image there. Um, but if that's uh, a distance of about 60 meters, five times the length of the boat, then the amplitude of the wave is going to be half of that, or about 30 meters. Because remember, amplitude is not the top of the crest to the bottom of the trough. The amplitude is uh, the displacement from rest position to maximum, so it's going to be half of that uh, value. Okay? So I hope that made sense. Uh, I hope I covered off the important sort of anatomy and characteristics of waves. Uh, next little lesson, we're going to talk about the universal wave equation. All right? Ciao.